Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing good. So uh, from this session onwards, we are starting our module 6 for the subject EC308 Embedded Systems. In our previous module, uh, we were dealing with various inter-process communications and various elements of an operating system or a program such as the process, the thread, task, interrupt service routines, um, signal handlers, um, input output files, various device driving functions and so on. We also discussed about inter-process communication elements such as signals, semaphore, um, message queue, mailboxes, pipes, sockets and so on. We, uh, yeah, even the remote procedure called RPCs. So having uh, known all these things, it's time for us to understand a very important concept, a very important part of embedded systems, the operating system. The operating system, their uh, working, their structure, their performance and different types of operating system. So this module, the sixth module shall deal with the real time operating system. So in this module, as per your syllabus, we shall cover the services, goals, structures of real time operating system and uh, the kernel elements or the kernel services, the process management, memory management, device management, file system organization, input output device organization and so on. So in fact, this, uh, this thing, the kernel section, we had a very brief overview of this kernel section in our previous module. We shall see them uh, these topics in detail in this unit. Uh, also, we shall uh, discuss about various types of RTOS and the micro COS to RTOS, their various functions and other kinds of RTOS. So uh, let's begin the real time operating system. So uh, first I shall divide this term real time and I'm sorry, real time and operating system. So we are already familiar with what is an operating system. Simply operating system is an interface between the user of a computer system and the computer hardware. Let's see what does that mean. Well, um, we'll take this example. It's uh, something I hope that you will like. Consider yourself uh, entering a restaurant. Since we have been in lockdown for many days, this example will at least bring some amount of pleasure, I hope. <laughs> Okay, suppose uh, you guys are entering a restaurant. So what happens is I being a customer sits in my table and I'm ready to um, have some good food. So what do I do? I wait for my waiter and I'll give the order for my food to the waiter. Now this waiter travels from me to uh, maybe into their work area or their canteen or gift area somewhere. To the work area he gives the order for my food so in this cafeteria we have the tomatoes onion salt turmeric we have all the components in different different spaces so based on what food I have I have demanded they shall prepare the food and give to me through the weight right so what has happened here? This is what happens in operating system too. The customer is the user of a computer system. And your footsteps in the work area of the or the cafeteria is your computer hardware. So in fact, your customer, uh, you want to access the food items being prepared in the cafeteria. You cannot directly walk into the cafeteria, take the food and come out. That is a restricted zone, right? In the restaurants, you have seen uh, entry restricted, permission only for uh, employees, something like that. So that area, the work area is a restricted area where your customer or the user cannot enter. So you need some kind of an interface between the, between the customer and the work area. And who has done that job? The waiter. The waiter has collected the information from the customer to the uh, work area and he has delivered your product or your foodstuff. Here, 
the waiter act as the operating system who has interconnected who act as an interface between the customer and the food area that's what an operating system does an operating system will act as the interface between the customer who is the user for the system and the computer hardware which is where our food has been paid so an operating system is simply the interface between the user of a computer system and the computer hardware so again uh, i hope the concept about operating system is clear fine so keep that as a that is a very basic concept that we need uh, throughout this module so uh, i hope you have got an idea about what is an operating system keep that as a so uh, based on what kind of an application area we have this operating system on we have different kinds of operating system and one such operating system is a real time operating system so real time operating system i already have an idea about what is an operating system now when does an operating system become real time when your operating system is designed to respond in a time controlled manner it is a real time operating system when your operating system is designed to respond in a time controlled or event controlled manner you can call that kind of an operating system as a real time operating system uh, i would um, say yeah suppose uh, you, i hope you have uh, your family with the dominos delivery boys right so uh, when uh, online deliveries happen uh, they have a strict time constraint of 30 minutes so if the delivery doesn't happen in less than 30 minutes you get a free delivery so that is some kind of a real time operating system you have to strictly adhere to the time constraint if you do not uh, uh, fall within the time constraint something bad may happen that is the company doesn't get the amount for the food delivered if the food is not delivered within a defined time so that's what makes an operating system different from a real time operating system an operating system which has strict time con uh, constraints is called a real time operating system so in real time operating system the processing uh, and things must be done within a defined time or else that uh, system may fail or this, that may that can cause a major problem yeah right so the difference between operating system and real time operating system is clear okay so now this real time operating system just like other any kind of operating system they have library functions right but these library functions uh, are designed to obtain all the process in a in a very timely manner similar to all the other library functions because, but they are designed to obtain all your process and your result in a very particular timely manner now see programming uh, uh, a real time see uh, defining a real time operating system may sound really cool but programming a real time function may not be that easy why see uh, suppose you guys uh, you students are asked to study module 5 i'm simply asking you go and study module 5 what may happen you guys may just chill out you may not take it seriously right few of the students who who, um, who are very studious may start beginning uh, start studying right uh, this moment itself some others may start okay i have time i don't know when the exams is let me study tomorrow or day after tomorrow you may take it easy now what if i tell you go and study module 5 you have an exam tomorrow you are under a pressure now you are under a time constraint now which means you just have a day to study a whole unit so you have an overhead right you uh, when a particular time constraint has come before you you have a strict overhead to follow 
so that only if you follow that strict overhead you will be able to cover this uh, portions of this uh, of the particular unit and attend the exam if you do not do that you may fail the exam that's what happens in the case of rtos so rtos may sound cool but programming these rtos may uh, may not be that easy because the pro, uh, programmer must ensure that there is minimum overhead right only if there is minimum overhead the system may work efficiently and uh, only if the time constraints of a rtos are satisfied the system can work without a fail now uh, see this rtos can also perform multiple task and they can even communicate between uh, more than one processes at a time if you want to do this if you want to obtain these kind of task multiple processes inter process communication and things the rtos must be able to manage and schedule the cpu resources in a proper way just uh, in the case that tomorrow if you have two subjects two exams so if you have two exams what are you supposed to do you must be able to properly manage your time schedule your time uh, for uh, both the subjects and use your resources which is your study materials in a proper way so that you can do both the task in a efficient manner that's the same thing with rtos they can do multiple tasks only if they can manage and schedule their resources in a proper way and let's see what are the things the rtos can perform the rtos can perform a number of things which are uh, given here they can determine which all elements in the applications can control the cpu at this given time and in what order suppose you have three process so the rtos defines of these three process who will control the cpu which process will control first then second third and what uh, how much time can first process involve the cpu so all these things the rtos can determine another thing the rtos can handle the input and output attached to and from your hardware devices when to accept an input when to give an output to the hardware devices attached to your system and they are also responsible for sharing your internal memory among your multiple process or task that's uh, what we have said earlier they must be able to manage and schedule the cpu resources so they must be able to share the internal memory among the multiple task and finally the rtos also must send messages about the status of operation and any errors that might have occurred so uh, the rtos must also notify other elements of the system about the status of operation and other errors that has occurred in their operation and other responsibilities of the uh, rtos include task management scheduling interrupt servicing inter process communication synchronization among process memory management device management and so on we are already familiar with a few of these uh, responsibilities right we have uh, discussed these in the case of uh, our previous unit yet we shall see some of them in detail in this module also okay so i hope so far the idea about what is an operating system and rtos the functions of an rtos is clear to you if so let's move ahead what are the types of an operating system basically we have two types of real time operating system uh, okay this is not operating system as such types of real time operating system we have the hard real time and the soft real time just as the name uh, implies we can see that the hard real time operating systems need strict adherence to the task schedule and the soft real time they are uh, they are only concerned about the order or the sequence the precedence or the sequence of the task which is defined in the system 
Now, can you define some examples? Give some examples uh, thinking about hard real time and soft real time systems. Hard real time, which means if you do not adhere or if you do not strictly follow your time constraint, your system may fail. Very simple example is your um, what? What can I say? Yeah, the temperature control. Uh, maybe say let me let me make it white uh, the temperature control in a nuclear power plant see the temperature control in nuclear power plant comes under a hard real time system why if the temperature control is not per strictly adhered the system may fail which can cause a huge calamity as uh, something which has ha happened a number of times in the history. So uh, the hard real time systems must strictly follow their time constraint as in the case of nuclear power plants or even air traffic controls if they are not able to give the signals or messages within the time there may be a huge failure of your system. Now what about soft real time? You have a number of examples for soft real time. Your mobile phones. See, many times you can see that your mobile phones have become slow, slow, slow. Does that bring about a critical situation for you? Does it? It's very rare for such critical situations. Your uh, personal computers may hang a number of times, right? They are designed to operate within a critical time yet. Systems may slow down, but that doesn't uh, form about a very critical condition in your operation, right? Even your network coverages. See, uh, when I try to call any one of you, it, it, we do expect a quick response, but that is not always guaranteed. And even if it is not guaranteed, that doesn't cause a big issue. So such kind of systems come under soft real-time systems. Yes, so I hope the um, differences between hard real time and soft real time operating system is clear. Now let's see what are the characteristics of a real time operating system. Well, uh, a real time operating systems must be deterministic, which means your operations are performed at a fixed predetermined time or within a time interval, which is already defined. So it is deterministic process. We already know what is being done, what is being performed. Another thing is the responsiveness. So uh, when I say responsiveness, uh, it means suppose an interrupt occurs, then how long will your operating system take to service the interrupt uh, beginning from their execution? How, how um, fast your operating system respond to an interrupt or any other services right that's the second thing and third one reliability see uh, these real-time systems they performed and controlled uh, in a real time they control all the events in a real time so the loss of any performance may cause major damage and even loss of life many times in the case of nuclear power plant or air tra traffic control they can even uh, lead to loss of life so reliability is one of the most important characteristics of a real-time operating system. Another characteristic is user control. Uh, see, it's very important for uh, an operating system to allow the user to uh, have a control over the task priority of such systems. And for that, even the user must have a, a very good knowledge about the hard and soft task, hard real-time task and the soft real-time task. So these are the basic uh, characteristics of a real-time operating system. Now let's see what are the basic service goal of a operating system. Now what are these services and what are goals? Services are perhaps a set of tasks that the operating system can do. And the goal of the operating system is to ensure that these services are done, right? Is that clear? 
operating system has a set of well defined duties and the goal of this operating system is to ensure that they do their duties well in a good manner. So what are such things of an operating system? In the operating system they facilitate easy sharing of resources as per the schedule and allocation. Now here when I say resources it means the processor, the memory, the input output devices, uh, system timers, software timers, keypad, display, whatever resources or whatever elements are related to your system. All those are the resources for your uh, operating system. Right? So they must ensure that there is an easy sharing of these resources so that no process will uh, wait for an extremely long time to get these resources. Right? Another thing, the second thing is to facilitate easy implementation of your application program with the given system hardware through the software system, uh, system software. Your application can, must be easily implemented, should be easily implemented in your system. That's it. The third thing is to optimally schedule the process on one or more CPUs by providing a appropriate context, context switching mechanism. So there must be a proper scheduling mechanism. So three things that we uh, discussed so far, sharing of resources, easy implementation of application program, scheduling the process properly, right? And the fourth thing is maximizing the system performance to let different processes share the resources most efficiently with protection and without any security breach. So you want to get the best system performance. If you want to get the best system performance, you must make sure that there are different processes which is operating at the same time and there is proper allocation of resources for all the processes and they must not violate, violate any security or protection issues. Another factor or another uh, service goal is that they must provide proper management function. When I say management function, you are already familiar with that, which includes process management, memory management, file management, um, input output management, and various other management things. So they must be able to provide proper management of all the, these functions. Another uh, service is regarding the um, providing proper management and organization for the input outputs, devices and files and file like devices, a number of similar to the previous function. And this operating system, they must also provide interoperability, interoperability of the application on different networks, which means uh, they must uh, facilitate uh, operation of different applications on different networks in a good manner interoperability another uh, service is to provide a set of interfaces that integrates various devices and applications through standard and open systems you can remember it by saying provide a set of common interfaces so what is the duty of interfaces? They must integrate various devices to um, through standard and open systems. That's it. And another factor is they must provide easy interfacing and management function for network protocols and networks. And finally, this operating system service will include providing portability of the application on different hardware configurations. Um, your application developed on one particular hardware must be able to be used on another hardware configuration which means they must be portable that's it so these are the various service goals of a operating system now let's see what are the different types of um, mode structure in a operating system so we have the user mode and the supervisory mode in the user mode uh, the users are permitted to run and only use a 
a certain portions or certain functions and in instructions in your operating system. Suppose you have 100 instructions in your operating system. The user process may be permitted to access only say 10 instructions in the operating system. And the use of this operating system functions OS functions in the user mode must be done either by sending a message to the process associated with your OS kernel space or by system call. And uh, here the use of the hardware resources including the memory is not permitted without the OS making a system call. So which means the user cannot easily access all these functions. If the user want to access uh, any of their internal memory, the user must send a message to the operating system kernel. And only through this kernel, they can use the internal memory. The user sends a message to the kernel. The kernel must grant permission for the internal memory. Only then the user can control or access the internal memory. This is not an easy process and because of which this uh, your user mode functions can be slow, isn't it? They need time to check on your uh, permission from the kernel, then the kernel must grant the permission. So this involves a number of steps and hence their execution can be slow. And uh, see this specific area where the users function call is not permitted to read or write is called the kernel space. So the kernel space is a protected area, a protected set, section of memory where the users cannot directly access. So that's about the user mode. It's a, it's a kind of a restricted mode. Then you have the supervisory mode. This is called the kernel mode, which means uh, you have full control, right? So here, your operating system runs in protected mode and the functions and instructions in protected mode they can uh, they can access the protected area memory and the kernel space functions and process they can they uh, in supervisory mode they have a fast execution and even here only a system call can permit the read and write into your protected area or the kernel space right so there are two modes in operating system the user and the supervisory user is kind of a restricted supervisory as the name indicates they have better control and they are faster in execution now let's see what is the structure of an operating system the system structure of a operating system which means how is an operating system control the uh, the user application and the hardware we know that operating system is the interface between the user application and the hardware so what are the other elements that comes in this first element near the user side is your application software this application software executes um, the applications which is run on your given system hardware using their interfaces and system software. So the application software is the layer which is closest to the user, right? Below the application software comes the interface, application program interface. As the name indicates, they provide the interface between the application software and the system software. So uh, they are able to run on the processor using um, whatever given system software they have. Then you have the system software. See this system software is different from uh, the system software in the operating system. Okay, this is not the operating system system software. This is something additional. And they have, uh, see this operating system may not have all the functions uh, necessary for your system. And such functions which is uh, not present in your operating system, such as uh, interconnection for networks, device drivers, multimedia, 
such things are given in this system software section right then comes your operating system interface they interface your system software and the operating system kernel so definitely below the os interface comes your os the operating system here the kernel supervisory mode services file management other functions such as the user mode processing services everything happens in this os section the operating system section then you have the hardware operating system interface which means it interfaces the uh, above lying operating system to the below lying hardware the hardware may be processors memory ports other devices within the system and finally you have the hardware which contains all these devices so in this layered model all that you have to remember is the application software system software operating system and hardware so the you have these four elements and in between each element you have an interface see first two elements are, are your application software and the system software between that you have your application program interface other is a below the system software lies your operating system and in between them you have your operating system interface you have your operating system and your hardware and between them you have your hardware os interface so basically you have just four elements just remember that way the application software system software operating system and hardware between each of these elements you have an interface which means you have three interface sections forming your seven layered model of a system structure of a operating system that's all about in this session so in this session we have seen what is an operating system how is a real time operating system the rto is different from operating system the different types of uh, rtos the characteristics of an rto is uh, the service goals of an operating system um, the various modes the user supervisory mode in an operating system as well as the structure of an operating system please go through all these sessions it's very important uh, to understand further Please make sure you uh, have a good idea about all these things. Thank you.